In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between the average speed and average velocity. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video on total distance and displacement, make sure you watch that because you need to know exactly what the difference between the total distance and displacement is before you understand this concept. Now, an average speed is a scalar quantity and an average velocity is a vector quantity. What does that mean? A scalar quantity does not have any directions and vector quantities include both magnitude and direction. Now, um, as I written here, the average speed is the total distance over time and the average velocity is the displacement over time. So you already know the difference between these two, so I'm not gonna go through that. Now, what I'm gonna do is that I'm just going to show you how to calculate the average speed. Now let's take a look at this question here. A car starts driving at four meters per second for six kilometers. So let's say if I'm driving in a car, the first thing I wanna do for any kinematic question or any physics question for that matter is to I wanna have a clear picture of the situation and what's happening. Now my car is driving at four meters per second and it's traveling for six kilometers. So from here to here, let's say my distance is six kilometers, or since I have my velocity in meters per second, the easiest way to do this is to write this in meters. So it would be 6,000 meters. Now, 6,000 meters later, which is gonna be sometime in future, I decide to start driving at two meters per second, and I'm gonna continue going at that speed for 30 minutes. So I don't know where I'm gonna end up and what the distance is going to be, but it's gonna take 30 minutes. Now again, since I have my velocities in meters per second, I want to turn minute into second. And how do I do that? And I wanna turn minute, so the unit I want to convert is minute, so I'm gonna write it in the opposite side. One minute is 60 seconds, so I'm gonna write that on top. 30 times 60, is 1800 seconds. All right, so this is gonna be 1800 seconds. Now, the first thing I wanna do is to find the average speed. An average speed, as I had my formula in the other page, is the total distance over time. And that would be the total time. So first of all, I need to find what my total distance is and then what my total time is in order to be able to find out what my average speed is. Now I'm gonna write my total distance here. So I know from point A to point B is 6,000 meters. So if I were to find my total distance, I know the first part, so it's my A to B, and then plus B to C. Now what I don't know is my distance between B to C and how do I find that? I'm just gonna use simple physics to do that. So my speed is two meters per second and I'm gonna continue going at two meters per second for 1800 seconds. Now what I'm trying to find out is how far have I traveled after continuing at this rate. So I'm trying to find distance. Now the most simple equation in kinematics says speed equals distance over time. Therefore, if I were to solve for distance here, because distance is unknown, distance would be equal to cross multiply. So it would, if I were to rearrange this equation, it would be d equals v times t, velocity times time. So then my distance over here would be my velocity, which is two meters per second times the time I've spent driving at that rate, which is 1800 seconds, which I were to put that in my calculator, it would give me 3600 meters. Now this would be my distance on from B to C. Now I know in order to find my total distance, so going back to this equation here, I know my total distance is equal to AB, which is 6,000 meters, plus 3,600 meters, which is equal to 9,600 meters. So this would be my total distance. Now, the next thing I want to find is total time. So for total time, it would be the total time between A to B 
and then again from B to C. Now from A to B, I don't know how long it took, but I know from B to C, it's taking me 1800 seconds. Now in order to find the total time traveling for A to B, I need to do another equation. So first of all, I'm gonna take a look and see what I have. So I know my speed is four meters per second. I know the distance is 6,000 meters. And what I'm trying to find out is the time that it's taken for me to travel that distance at that speed. The famous equation is just V equals D over T. And if I'm solving for T, then it would just be D over V. So over here, my time would be distance, which is 6,000 meters over velocity, which is four meters per second. Putting that into my calculator will just give me 1,500 seconds. Therefore, my total, therefore going back to my equation here, the time that it took from point A to point B is 1,500 seconds. From point B to point C, it's taken me 1,800 seconds. Therefore, the total time for my travel is 3,300 seconds. Great, so now I have my total time and I have my total distance. So what I can do, I can plug it in into my average speed equation. So going back to my average speed equation here, I have for my total distance 9,600 meters. And for my total time, I had 3,300 seconds. Therefore, if I divide these two numbers together, I will get a number of 2.91 meters per seconds. So that would be my average speed for this question. Now let's understand how to calculate the average velocity. Remember that we mentioned earlier in the video that has both magnitude and direction. So when I write my answer down, I will have to have my both magnitude and direction. So I'm going to remember that. Now let's, let's draw a picture of this question. So a car has traveled 40 kilometers east. So let's say I'm gonna draw a vector. So it's traveled 40 kilometers east. And this is east, this is north, this is west, and this is south. Then it started to travel 30 kilometers northwest. What does northwest mean? That basically means north 45 degrees west or west 45 degrees north. Let's say if we were to do 45, so this is north and this is west and this is 45 degrees. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to draw my vector and this would be 30 kilometers northwest, and this is 45 degrees. All right, what I'm trying to calculate here is what the average velocity is, and the formula for average velocity is just displacement over total time. Now, total time is given here, it says two hours, so I already know this is two hours, but displacement is not given. So I'm going to focus on finding the displacement here. So the displacement is just the addition of these two vectors, my vector d1 and vector d2. My displacement vector is going to be from the tail of my first vector to the head of my second vector. And I'm going to call this my displacement vector. All right. What I can do in order to find my displacement vector is to break d1 and d2 apart into x and y direction. Um, I'm going to draw a chart here. I'm going to have my x and y direction, and I'm going to have my d1, my d2, and my displacement vector as a result. So I'm going to break them into components here. So for my d1, in the x component, I have 40 kilometers. So the x component of my d2, it would just be 30 kilometers time cosine of 45 degrees. Now, since it's in the west direction, opposite of the east direction, it will have a negative sign. Now, the y component of my d1 vector, which is the green one here, is zero because it doesn't have any component in the y direction. So I will write zero for the component. Now, for my d2, my y component would just be here, 
which is 30 times sine of 45 degrees. Now, if I add the first two, so 40 kilometers minus 30 cosine of 45. 30 cosine of 45 is basically 21.2 degrees. So once I add that to 40, I will get 18.8 kilometers. Now for the y direction, 0 plus 30 times sine of 45 is just going to be 21.2 kilometers. So my vector, the white vector here, the displacement, will have an x component of 18.8. So if I drew it here, from here to here, it would be 18.8. And from here to here, it would just be 21.2. Vector. Now I know the x component and the y component. So let's say if I had this picture here, so this is my d, and this is 18.8, and this is 21.2. What I'm interested in finding out and calculating is the magnitude of d vector over here. So I can use Pythagorean theory to do to find that. So d would be the first side to the power of 2, so 18.8 to the power of 2, plus 21.2 to the power of 2. Now putting that into my calculator, I will end up with the square root of 802.68. That equals to roughly about 28.3 kilometers. Now I have the magnitude of my vector here. In order to find the direction, I need this little angle here which I'm going to call theta. I can use tangent to find my theta because tangent of theta is just the opposite side over the adjacent side. Therefore theta would just be the arc tangent of 21.2 over 18.8. If I were to put that into my calculator, I will get 48 4 degrees. Therefore, my displacement vector is equal to 28.3 kilometers. And then, since theta is 48.4, I can write it as east 48.4 degrees north. So, this is my final displacement vector. Now, in order to find my average velocity here, now, looking at my average velocity equation right here, now I both have the displacement and have the time, therefore I can use this equation to find out what my average velocity is. All I'm going to do is that I'm just going to plug in my values, so average velocity is equal to my displacement, which I had here equal to 28.3 kilometers east, 48.4 degrees north divided by time, which was two hours. Now I want to have my velocity in terms of kilometers per hour, so I'm just going to keep the units as is. Now 28.3 is just 14.2 kilometers per hour, and my um, direction remains the same, so east 48.4 degrees north. So that is my final average velocity. That's it guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and it really helped you. If it did, please like it, share and subscribe. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you can always post underneath this video and we will comment back. Thank you so much.